Welcome back to Working Faith, where we take a spiritual approach to career success. I'm your host, Jalen Isley, and today we're talking about leadership at multiple levels with multiple parties and different needs, and we are excited to introduce Sharminta. So Sharminta works at Valencia College as the manager of learning support, where she supervises a team that can range from 15 to 40 employees. You don't know what you're going to get. So (laughs) that is so amazing. And in addition to that, she also owns her own business, Brown Joy. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the show. But Sharminta, welcome. We are so glad to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. I am so excited to talk to you about leadership because your role is so unique. You've got students, you've got full-time employees, you've got part-time employees, you've got just, you know, you've got team members across a wide spectrum in terms of their career journey, and you're supervising all of them and ensuring that they're able to deliver their best work each day. So I'm excited to learn more about how your faith and your spirituality contributes to your ability to effectively lead. As you know, this show is all about leveraging our spiritual principles to positively impact the workplace and grow our careers. So let's start off by talking about your faith journey. I know you identify as Christian. What are some of the core principles of your faith that resonate most with you and how have they shaped who you are today? So as you said, I am a Christian. I grew up Baptist. But as I've gotten older and I've grown, I'm non-denominational, but God, the Lord is at my center in all that I do. And my biggest principle is that it's grace, encouragement, and understanding. God has always given us grace when we don't deserve it. You know, knowingly sometimes we are not being the best that he has created us to be, he still provides with grace. And when he's giving us that grace, we need to extend it to others. So I make sure with my team, I'm consistently and continuously giving grace. And the second part is encouragement, encouraging my team. God encourages every day with his word. You know, we go into his word, we go into Psalms, probably get a good word in and it's encouraging for our hearts. So I want to encourage my team, especially when there's days where it's just crazy or their life is happening to them, but encouraging them, we're going to get through this. We're going to get this together, get through this together and we're going to move forward. So that's huge. And also understanding, understanding that our team, our employees, they have lives. And if there, there's something going on in their life, they would, they're not able to show up as the full, authentic selves at times. And we, as, as leaders, we have to understand that because sometimes we just get so focused on the projects and the job, but these are whole human beings. So when we're giving our teams, we have to give them grace, encouragement, and understanding. I think it's amazing how directly you link your walk with God to how you lead your teams. So God is the leader in your life and God extends you grace, encouragement, and understanding. And because of that, you're able to deliver that same type of support to your team members. I've had a lot of people on this show so far, but you're the first person I feel like who takes such a literal, direct you know, (laughs) connection there. And I love it. You know, like, honestly, that's, that's the purpose of this show. We have these spiritual encounters, these spiritual principles, these spiritual anchors, and we're not always conscious of how we can use that. Like if it's helping you personally, of course, you being able to show that to someone else is going to help them grow their career as well. So I love the direct tangible, literal connection that you're making with this. This is amazing. Thank you. And Jalen, I am a literal person. I am so, (laughs) sometimes it's like, I'm like too literal, but it has definitely helped me in my journey as being a, a leader. Definitely. Definitely. So we know you identify as Christian. When you're talking about leading, you mentioned, you know, some of the things that you've experienced in your own walk with God that have influenced your ability to effectively lead. Can you share an example? I mean, we're talking about being literal here. So can you give us an example of 
a work challenge or a work opportunity. It doesn't necessarily have to be a challenge or, or anything negative, but give us an example of an opportunity where leadership showed up and you had to rely on your spiritual principles to guide your behavior. So at one point in my career, I had an employee where we didn't get along. Hmm. We didn't get along initially. There was just some things that happened and, you know, how I came into the role and um, th that person had other thoughts of who should be in that role. So coming into that, so we, we had to give each other time to get to know each other and build trust. And there wasn't a lot of trust there, but I was very adamant of creating that trust. And even if that person needed me, um, like if they were going through something personally, I'm like, I'm here for you. What, is there anything that you need for your family? I'm here. When I believe when, when that person was able to see me as a real person, not just me giving her projects, me, you know, when she saw that I was invested in her as a person, because hmm. a lot of the times in a lot of our relationships, we think they're just one dimensional, but I think all of my relationships are multi-dimensional, specifically with my employees. And I always want to, like I said, give that grace for my team to show up as their full selves. So to create, so they can be creative. So they can feel like, okay, I don't have to put this to the side and block it out, but I can come here, be who I am, even if it's not the best that I want to be and still, still do well. So in that situation I was giving you, I always want to, I extended grace. I always send extended understanding. I always ask, is there something that I can do better? I ask my team this all the time. What can I do better? Because hmm. a lot of times when you're with your, and I ask her this, I ask that person this, what can I do better to help you and help each other and help our relationship? Mm -hmm. And I made sure when that person was leaving um, the role, I made sure I gave her an amazing recommendation because I meant it all. Like the work was phenomenal. It could, but it may have been a personality clash and that, but that's okay. We're not all supposed to get along with everyone, but we all have to respect one another. Hmm. And I had to see more over her as a, like not looking at her as her personality, but looking at her as, as a whole being, hmm. as the whole person. I see. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think that is such a strong skill set to have as a leader. I was reading an article on LinkedIn the other day, um, and they were talking about emotional intelligence being the number one trait that an effective leader can possess in order to be successful in their role. And your success is is directly tied to the success of your team. You know, if your team is struggling you're not a good yes. leader, <laughs> you know, or something, yes. something needs to change. And so for you to be able to identify, all right, we've got a potential challenge here that could impact the success of the team, but let me put that to the side. Let me just focus on her as, or him as a person and try to connect with them and understand who they are, trusting and knowing that everything will work out if you all know, if you all can respect and communicate with each other. I think that makes so much sense. Yes. And I'm really big on what my team is doing, like their everyday projects, um, their everyday tasks. How was that preparing them for the future? I'm always talking about my team, about their future. Right. Um, I'm not a type of supervisor that I wants to keep them for years and years on end. No, I'm like, okay, this project we just had, this um, task we just had to do. Okay, how are we going to put that on our resumes? So when you're ready for the next step, you can talk about an interview and you can talk about it in your application. Hmm. So I'm always talking with my team, no matter what level they're on about next steps. And because God prepares because the things that happen in our lives and the hardest things are the most like good and bad things. It's only God preparing us for the next level. Right. So I want to do that literally with my team as well. Hmm. Yep. And sometimes we don't realize it because we're just so indebted in the work. We're so indebted in everyday life, but I want to help my team look up and say, mm -hmm. okay, all that you're doing, it has a purpose for now and for the future. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And I feel like people have so many options today in terms of their career, yes. much more than we would have even imagined even two years ago. So the pandemic really opened up 
a lot of eyes for people to determine what matters most to them and where they want to spend their time and energy. And so our leaders have to be able to connect the dots for people. Like you, you're just as you mentioned, you've got to help people understand how critical they are to the work that's going on currently, but also how that's going to prepare them for what they want to accomplish next in their lives. So I think that investment that you're making in your team is it makes all of the difference. So I actually want to talk to you about your own investment. You know, over the past few years, a lot of companies have been investing more into the well-being of their team members, especially as it pertains to mental and emotional health. And for me, everyone doesn't agree with this, but I consider spirituality to be a core part of someone's wellness. So you've dropped some amazing gems today on how it is to be an effective leader. How do you build yourself up? Like, what? how do you invest in your own spiritual health and well-being so that you can deliver your best work as often as possible to your team? One of the things I do, too, I like, I love people. I want to say I absolutely love people. I love meeting new people. Like, even when we met, I was like, I came up, like, I just love meeting new people. But sometimes I have to recharge. So what I do to recharge is I love science. Like I love people, but I love my science and I love my alone time. So like at night when I put my daughter to bed, I like sit in my bed, I journal. I may have like a writing prompt of like a quote that I like. And I just write it about that and just clear my mind. Or even sometimes I journal as I'm talking to the Lord. And literally my journaling is just praying for my family, praying for my team. Anything that, you know, they share with me that they're going through, I make sure I'm like just praying for them, journaling in that um, for them. Another thing I do, like I said, I like meeting wonderful people. So going to conferences like Demetria's uh, Spring into Leadership Conference that's coming up. So I'm with um, like-minded women or just women that I aspire to be like. I think that's really important as well. That helps me as a leader. And also a lot of like, I'm on like a lot of different boards and nonprofits and things like that. So giving back, volunteering, that helps a lot as well. Um, We establishing myself as a leader. And one thing I did start doing People are that are higher than me, like at Valencia. Um, I I'm like our AVPs, things like that. I ask if I can meet with them to learn more about the career journey. I do it within Valencia and without outside mm-hmm. Valencia. LinkedIn is amazing. Right. Everyone right. should be using LinkedIn. Okay. Um, not just looking for a job, but I use LinkedIn, just asking people, I just I would like to reach out, I would like to learn more about your career journey. And they always drop gems for me that I can apply to my leadership. So the big thing is is like silence, like you know, prayer, journaling, being in rooms with other people that I aspire to be and that I'm connected to, um, volunteering, giving back, and then also asking people um, to meet with them and to learn more about their career journeys. Interesting. That's a creative mix of what you're doing to fortify your spirit and ensure you're set up to, you know, kind of live your best life and, and experience, you know, everything that this life has to offer you. So in addition to doing the silence and the journaling, I'm hearing connection and I'm, I'm hearing that I'm hearing, you know, release and giving actually recharges you and teaches you and fortifies you so that you can then go and show up as an effective leader for your team. That's amazing. I think that's a really great idea to put out there. Sometimes when people think about spirituality, it's very somber and silent and solemn, but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, that's a, as you (laughs) mentioned, that's part of it, but also connecting with others, getting out into the community, those are all spiritually enhancing and fulfilling as well. So <laughs> that's what Jesus did. That is literally that's true. Did. He wasn't, you know, there was times where he was in solitude. So he needed his time, but there was, that's, well, so that's what he was doing. Going into communities, speaking the good word, had his disciples, like that's, that's so what true. he was doing. Yeah. Connecting. Absolutely true. I love that idea of the silence and the solitude, but also the connection and the community. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right. Well, great. Well, it has been such a pleasure having you on the show today. And I can't wait to follow your career and your journey, especially Brown Joy. If you all don't know, Brown Joy is an amazing company that highlights, 
you know, the full spectrum of representation in this country, you know, so people who are normally underrepresented, people of color, they can come to this company and actually see themselves presented in a beautiful, amazing light. Uh, and so if you don't know about Brown Joy, the link to her company is also going to be in the show notes. So look out for that. But before we wrap up, Charminta, let us know, tell us a spiritual principle that you think will help everyone be more effective leaders in their careers? Prayer. Praying. Not only praying for your peace of mind, but your employees' peace of mind, your team's peace of mind. There's so many things that can go wrong in life. It could be from car our cars breaking down, our families getting sick. That can distract us or, or deter us away from our, our work. So I pray for my team. I, I pray for myself. Allow us to have a good and blessed, mm. productive week. I start off like Sunday night, you know, I'm praying for us to let everyone get to work safely, get home safely. There's just so many things that can mm -hmm. go on that is outside of our control. It's, it's really important for me not only to be praying for my well-being, but for my team as well. So they can show up as their full authentic self. Yeah, definitely. And when you're working with a team, you know, I, I'm of the mindset, if I'm going into an office, I don't need to shout out what religion that I am. And I don't need to even shout out that I prayed for you last night. I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to mm -hmm. let you experience the results and the effect of that. What do you think? Like, do you, because I know you mentioned praying for your team members. Some people yeah. might hear that and they're like, I didn't, I don't want you praying for me or I don't, you know, I don't want you to have a prayer meeting with me in your office or anything like that. Sometimes it's scary. I'm not praying with you unless you need, you know, I don't want to, there's, there's boundaries, right. there's boundaries. But for me, you know, in my faith that, you know, has taught me, you know, we pray mm -hmm. for others and I'm going to do that. And I don't tell people that I'm mm -hmm. doing it. That makes sense. You know, I don't tell people that I'm doing it. I really um, believe of creating safe mm -hmm. spaces. One thing that I always hear a lot from family and friends and like my coworkers, sure, you're you're a safe mm. space. And I feel like I am a safe space because of my so prayer life and because my peace of mind, my, from our faculty, from my employees to my counterparts, they literally come in my office, Char, I just want to pick your brain about something. Like literally it could be a revolving door and I have a little desk <laughs> in my office and we just sit at the desk and we just talk about it and we just brainstorm. And I was like, and I didn't realize I was doing it. So like people come to my office so much. And one day I was like, wait, people, there's like four or five people that came to my office throughout today. I barely got any admin work done today, but it's just establishing and having that safe space for people to feel like they can be themselves so they can speak in their heart and just get through things and just bring. That's amazing out. because here, it, it, anyone who's listening, I don't, I don't know if you're following here, but she is at home praying for her well-being and the safety and well-being of her team. And then what's happening at work is that people are coming up to her and saying, you are a safe space. And they have no idea that she's praying for their safety and their well-being at home, they just feel the effect of it and they feel the safety. They feel like it's a safe space. They feel covered and protected and supported when they encounter her. I think that's amazing. I think that's a, an amazing principle that can be shared with other leaders, you know, regardless, it, it doesn't matter, you know, what you necessarily say or do in front of your employees, what's sincere about you, what, when you sincerely try to look out for your team members and you're concerned and you're you're proactively thinking about their safety and well-being, they're going to feel that energy from you, whether you tell them or not. Yes. No, that's yes. amazing. Absolutely amazing. I encourage mm -hmm. everyone, if you haven't done it already, I don't care what you believe in. If you've never done it before, this is the week that you pray. This is the week that you pray and and see <laughs> what happens. Let's just let's just take an experiment. Let's just see what happens when you start praying for yourself and for your team. Okay. <laughs> So, well, thank yeah. you so much for sharing with us today. I look forward to staying up to date with you. Listen, everyone, thank you for listening to Working Faith. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. All of the show notes and the information about Charminta are, can be found on our website, workingfaith.com. Remember to subscribe, rate, and share the show with others. And I'd love to hear your comments. You can engage directly with me by joining the Working Faith group on LinkedIn. And Charminta is there as well. So if you have any questions for her, you can at her in that on that page and she'll respond. That's right, Charminta. Yeah, you'll respond to them. Yeah. 
Yes, of course. Splendid. Oh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> splendid, Please. splendid. All right. Well, thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with more tips on how you can take a spiritual approach to your career success and work your faith. Good day.